I'm here with Joe Rotella, who always makes power tools look super duper easy. And today is no exception. He's going to show us how to make a clock with a pendulum. Hey, Joe. Hey, we're going to do it all in about a seven foot space. This this is amazing to me. Let's get started. We got so much to we do. do. We Safety do. glasses on. Safety glasses on. I need to start with a piece of lumber that's a half inch thick. Okay. Six inches wide, 12 inches long. Of course, all this is on the website. I'm going to use the table saw for that. And the first thing I need to do is raise the blade so that it's high enough to go through that piece of wood. I always keep the blade down just for safety. That's always a good tip, I think. So that's in place. I'm going to use the pusher in order to get this thing I was going to say, it's started. really easy to think that these tools are toys because they're so cute and little, but they're serious, real to tools. Oh, well, you're going to see we're going to do a whole project. I've already got a hose attached attached to the other ones. This isn't going to make that much dust, but we could do that as well. So we're ready to go. My blade and everything's locked in place. Let's cross cut this. Oh yeah. Now, we don't have to worry if it's exactly 12 inches. Okay. This is a very forgiving project. The next thing we're going to do is draw a line up from the bottom, eight inches, or down from the top four, okay. and just draw the points of our clock. And now we need to cut this because off. Because our clock is a house. Our clock is That's a house. That's why. So I've already adjusted the guide on the bandsaw so mm -hmm. that this will fit under it, but fairly tight. That prevents this thing from wobbling as we oh. go. Oh. So I've got it ready to roll. Okay. We don't have to worry about how perfect this is because we're going to cover it with a piece of metal. I like it when things are forgiving. We need a circle now to okay. go in the center of the clock. Now, circles seem tricky to cut. Yeah, I was going to say because I feel like I understand how to cut straight, but a circle seems really hard. So in this case, lower the guide again so okay. it's just above the material. And that again is so nothing is wiggling around and jumping. I'm going to cut a bunch of relief cuts that will cut away as I cut. And stay outside the circle because we can always sand it down to be a good circle. I was going to say these relief cuts remind me of sewing, which is a that's something you do when you cut curves in sewing. Same thing. Yeah. That's a great looking circle. circle. Now we're going to cut a piece of copper for the roof. And what's nice is that most blades that handle wood will also handle non-ferrous metals. Really? And copper is a non-ferrous metal. But you're metal. wearing gloves for this one. Well, I'm afraid the edge of the copper might be a little sharp. Okay. So same thing, that guide, it doesn't seem it, but look at the difference between an eighth of an oh, inch and wow. the copper. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a lot. So we're just going to lower it a little bit and cut this off. When you cut metal instead of wood, do you have to move more slowly or anything like that, or is it exactly the same? It's, you always want the tool to do the work, so you don't want to force it. In this case, I had the blade speed fairly high, and it went through that like butter. It did. Like it was butter. great. Now, the clock mechanism is three quarters of an inch stem, so we had a half here. 
and an eighth here. So we still need another eighth. So we're talking so, about the thickness of the wood, right? Of the wood. So okay. I made a little spacer. I just cut a rectangle and I rounded it. This copper, as I mentioned, is a little bit rough. Okay. And we also don't have an absolutely perfect circle. And we want absolutely well, perfect. Well, I'm a little fussy. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go over here to the disc sander and take the rough edges off this piece of copper. Now, you could, of course, use sandpaper. It would just take a lot longer. Well, because look how fast. Look how fast it goes. Super easy, and you're holding it at an angle. Because I'm trying to take the birds off that edge. Now, I can go all the way around. Uh -huh. Remember our circle we said wasn't perfect? Yeah. I don't even need to change the paper or anything. Uh -huh. And I can touch up. And I always like something where you can correct it afterwards, make it just how you want it afterwards, and all that stuff is so easy. Now this you're not angling, you're just straight on. Because I'm really trying to make up for where I sawed. Cool. Now if there's any rough spots, I could hit it on the edges, but I think we're good to go. Yeah. So now we have all our pieces. The next okay. thing we need to do is drill a hole for the clock mechanism itself. Okay. You always want to start with some board that you're going to drill that the drill's going to go through. I've got this one already marked. I was going to say, you have very clearly marked out exactly where you want I it. I did. Now, the key here is this is thick. It's a half inch. Yeah. So you want the drill to do the work. What does that mean? I'm not pulling this lever down like a slot machine. Okay. I'm going very slow. And you're kind of feeling your way, because like, how do you know when to stop? Well, you'll feel how it goes through the top board okay. and then hits the bottom board. This is plywood, so mm -hmm. you're seeing different colors of wood, because plywood is made up of layers. Very cool. We're almost through. See that when you get a little bit stuck, you sort of lay off and then you pull it down again. We're almost done. And do you just know this from years of having done woodwork, the feel of it, or is it really obvious? It's really obvious. Awesome. So I'm going to just lay this here. I've got one already drilled. We're ready to assemble. Okay. And a little trick about assembly here. For the copper, this is why this top part didn't really matter. Okay. Because look at the difference in the size. Oh, so you're never going to see it when it's on the wall. No, it's very forgiving. And I would just use a dry adhesive tape. Okay. Because it's fast. I never thought of adhering copper with tape. I would have thought that you would have needed like serious glue no, or something. No, no, no. And now we have to line up. Remember, we need three quarters of an inch. Our spacer and our circle. And why do we need three quarters of an inch? Because this stem is three quarters ah, of an inch. Ah, and this is just a ready-made clock mechanism that you can buy. Absolutely. So I don't want to glue this because we still have to finish it. And there's yeah. all different ways we could finish it. But I would put some dry adhesive tape on the back. Lining it up is a pain. So here's a tip. Put your dry adhesive on the back. Stack them on a dowel that's the same size, and then basically drop it and press. And they line up perfectly, and, and when you press it, everything is staying in place. You insert our mechanism, and you have a pendulum clock. How does the pendulum attach? It just attaches onto the mechanism onto there? Onto the mechanism, there's this little piece, and it goes ah, right there. And if we look at the finished piece that you have here, I can see that copper roof. I can see the decoration that you've done with the beautiful paper. But really, you could use any surface design technique. Absolutely. That's just collage with a glaze over it and then a stain on the circular part. That is super cool, Joe. Thank, Thank you. you so much.